Hello and welcome to a brief lecture on automotive engineering. My name is Peter Fussy and I'm an industrial research professor. A bit about me first. I'm an industrial professor because I work both here at the University of Sussex and also as a technical specialist in the engineering firm Ricardo where I develop control systems or computers in cars and trucks for manufacturers across the world. My talk today will look under the bonnet of a couple of cars taking you on a journey through a combustion engine, showing how the knowledge you have learned at school will be extended and developed when you come to university. Since we are in lockdown, I will use a couple of cars in my street to illustrate. Firstly, a favourite car from the 80s, the Peugeot 205 GTI, and then a more up-to-date Euro 6 example, a Mercedes C-Class. And since it's difficult to look under the bonnet of an electric car, we'll finish with a car from the future our own electric racing car. Let's begin with the Peugeot 205. As you can see, there is a lot of space around the engine, allowing us easy access to the engine components. Today, we will track the airflow as it enters the engine. The air flows in through this black pipe and passes into the air filter that removes any large particles that may damage the engine. Moving out of the air filter, we pass the airflow sensor. This is used to measure the amount of air passing into the engine. This relates to your chemistry studies, since it is used to ensure the right amount of fuel is injected for stoichiometric combustion, which means the complete combustion of the fuel with no excess fuel or air left over. We then pass the throttle and into the intake manifold, which has tuned pipes into each cylinder to optimise the performance. Pressure waves bounce up and down these pipes. The trick here is to get the high pressure to coincide with the valve opening so more air is pushed into the cylinder. The air goes on to mix with fuel and this mixture burns in the cylinder, releasing energy that powers the car. This process brings many areas of engineering together, from thermodynamics, looking at the energy transfers, mechanical analysis, looking at valve motion and crankshafts, and electronics, to control the fuel injectors. Moving on to a more modern Euro 6 engine, which brings reduced emissions and improved fuel economy, we find that when we open the bonnet, it is difficult to see what is going on because of a large cover. These covers are used to keep the engine quiet. Underneath the cover is the culmination of over 100 years of research and development that gives a surprisingly complex machine. You may wonder if this is relevant in the move to electric cars. Well, certainly the number of combustion cars may decrease, but combustion engines are likely to be around for some time in heavy duty trucks, for example. And should synthetic fuels take off, we may yet see the resurgence of combustion engines as a zero carbon solution. As for the Peugeot 205, the air enters through an intake pipe. The duct goes into the air filter box, which is now plastic. This allows more complex shapes to be designed, which is important here as there isn't much space under this bonnet. As engineers, we are responsible for selecting the best materials for the job. As the air leaves the filter, the flow rate is measured, this time with a more modern hot film sensor. This is cooled down by the flow of air and the change in temperature allows the airflow to be estimated. The engine has many sensors all over that feed into the control unit, which you can see as a silver box mounted on top of the air filter box. The controller optimizes the combustion and the performance of the engine. The next stage for the air is to enter the turbocharger where it will be compressed, forcing more air into the engine. However, this is buried down the side of the engine and it's difficult to see. The compression of the air draws on principles you covered in your physics courses where you studied ideal gas laws and the relationships between pressures and temperatures. Now let's look at the fuel system. The fuel in this engine is injected directly into the cylinder. This means the fuel must be injected at a very high pressure, around 2000 times atmospheric pressure. To imagine this, picture being 20 kilometers underwater. You can check this by remembering pressure is rho gh. The fuel is supplied through steel pipes you can see over the engine and into fuel injectors that squirt the fuel into the cylinder. 
Fuel injectors are high precision components with tiny holes. The exhaust gases then exit the engine and pass through the exhaust system, which these days is a bit like a miniature chemical plant. I'll now look under the car to see the exhaust pipe. Here you may see several cans. They hold catalysts and filters that clean up the exhaust gases. With a Euro 6 car, it is also common to have an SCR or Selective Catalytic Reducer that uses urea to reduce the NOx emissions to nitrogen, again drawing on your chemistry knowledge. The exhaust pipe itself is quite a simple structure and at the end, above the rear muffler, you can see a rubber support that isolates the vibrations from the vehicle. This will be designed by extending your studies from a mass on a spring. We'll now finish with a brief look at our electric Formula student car. In this project, we are designing and building a high power electric racing car. The students here develop their skills in electrical circuits, mechanical design, thermal management, vehicle engineering, safety, and many more topics that are in high demand across the industry. Welcome to uh, SAR Racing. This is a collaboration between Sussex University in the UK and Einsham's University in Cairo, Egypt. We're collaborating to build an electric car to race at Silverstone in the International Formula Student Competition. The unique thing about SAR is that we are the only inter-university team doing a joint venture between Sussex University and Ein Shams University in Egypt. And not only this, but we are an international team. And even though we only have one year of experience, we've already made it into the top 40 for the Silverstone events. Here at SAR Electric, we feel that electric cars play a huge role in the future of transportation. With the ban on diesel and petrol coming in the next few decades, we feel that research will be needed to extend the technology by drawing knowledge from all types of engineering and different disciplines, we hope to put together a car that will compete against the best universities in the world at Silverstone. I hope this brief video catches your interest and shows how studying at Sussex will allow you to extend and develop your science and maths knowledge to develop new automotive systems. We look forward to seeing you on campus in the near future.